wish to call. It's a mouthful. You will not find a better musician on this stage today, I guarantee it. Or any other, for that matter. That's right. Thank you so very much. And Mr. Cahill will be back on stage three more times right before each of our Birds of, Pre Birds of Prey presentations. So let me start by saying, welcome, lords and ladies, to Her Majesty's Royal Birds of Prey. to Her Majesty's Royal Birds of Prey and Falconry demonstration. I am Sir Robert Chesman, Her Majesty's Royal Falconer. I will be your host for this presentation. And I am here with many of my assistants. We are all here representing an organization we call Wildlife Revealed. We are a nonprofit organization that travels throughout the land with all of our different birds. We present them not only for your entertainment, but most importantly, for your education. So I hope everyone has a chance to learn something here today. Before we get started, however, there are a few things I must ask of everyone. First of all, with the exception of the bird I'm holding here, the rest of our birds will be in free flight. That means no strings attached. So occasionally, they may take low flights over the audience and amongst us all. So we simply ask at no time should you reach up to pet the pretty birdies. <laughs> They're meat eaters. We refer to these as finger foods. <laughs> Second item. I do like to point out we have several perches located around the audience, many of them on the poles, and even here on our stage. Please be advised that our birds will frequent those locations, and they are fully flighted, so they may even fly up into trees and other structures in the area. So it is our suggestion that you keep your eye on the birdie. That way we will all know the appropriate moments to duck. And the last and most important request is if we have food items, most specifically, turkey legs. I would ask that you please place those out of sight during the program, for we do have one bird in particular that has learned to identify the wrappers that turkey legs come served in. I hate to see you pay for such an item and have it carried away by a bird. But now that we've said all this, are you ready to meet the birds? Yeah! Well, met. I do have several amazing birds. Of course, the first sits right here on my hand. I am curious, though, do any of you know what this bird might be? It is a kookaburra, which is the largest of the kingfisher species. It is known as an Australian laughing kookaburra. And her name is Sheila. That's, that's funnier than you know. It's, it's, never mind. Huh? <laughs> that is rather cute. I think so. But her name is Sheila, and she's an Australian laughing kookaburra. They are the largest of the kookaburra species. And as their name suggests, they're found in Australia. They are the largest of the kingfishers. You see, they are very different from most kingfishers, however. They don't live exclusively off of things like fish and aquatic animals. They will eat things like mice, snakes, lizards, large insects, anything they can grab with their beak and swallow down whole. However, it's not their eating habits that make them famous. It's that silly laughing call. So what do you say? Should I give her a laugh one more time? Yeah. All right, we'll give this a try. Notice now she's sort of sunning. So let's see if this works. And the most amusing part is this sound carries all across the fair. So let's see if anyone over the bridge hears this. Ready, girl? All right. tree monkey. <laughs> There's people walking around looking at the trees. It's great. <laughs> what do you say? Should we make this even more exciting and fly some birds? I think so. Good. Zachary, would you step over here? Don't be surprised if she laughs through half of the show. So, <laughs> here you are. So let's see. The first bird I would like to fly for you is quite a bit... <laughs> 
quite a bit different than the kookaburra now for several reasons. Now the kookaburra, for starters, is a day-active type of bird. We refer to those as being diurnal. This first bird I'd like to fly is famous for coming out at night. We refer to those birds as being nocturnal. So, who comes out at night? Owls. Who? Owls. Who? That's, that was for my own entertainment, but you're right. An owl. It's all right. At a previous uh, program, someone shot at teenagers. <laughs> the owl is the answer I'm looking for, and I do have an owl for everyone. This is one of the largest species of owls on the planet. It's known as a Eurasian eagle owl. We call him Romeo. All right, Romeo, why don't you come out here, buddy? Up. Right up here, bud. All the way to stage. Duck or owl. <laughs> Tell you what, why don't we lay the staff down at your feet if you don't mind? <laughs> you can welcome Romeo to stage. Give it back Okay. Romeo. Oh. 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 That was very brave how you hid behind the child. So. <laughs> That's all right. The lady in front of you, all she did was cover her beard. So. <laughs> we, all have, we all have priorities. Now, this is a Eurasian eagle owl. And owls are very different from... The day after the predators for a number of reasons. You may have already noticed he has gigantic orange eyes. His eyes are about the same size as yours and mine, yet he can dilate them much more than we can dilate ours. And he can so as much as 100 times better than we can at night. We've seen owls like this hunting for prey as small as a mouse from a football field away using only starlight to see by. But you know, if he can't see his prey, he can still find it with almost 100% accuracy. That's with his amazing hearing. There's a dark outline around the edge of his face. It's known as a facial disc. It's made of sound-sensitive feathers that funnel sound in huge ear openings on the side of his head. And it's very... <laughs> Did you get that picture, sir? <laughs> you have a picture of the last thing a mouse sees before it dies. <laughs> but, again, that dark outline acts like a satellite dish and helps to funnel sound in huge ear openings on the side of his head. His hearing is so powerful, he can find that same mouse under two feet of grass or snow and catch it without ever seeing it. They have another trait, though. The ability to sneak up on their prey. So listen as he flies back up the stage. Oh. Whee! Back up here, Romeo. <laughs> Whee! Right here, Romeo. <laughs> there he goes. Oh so, so as he flies, what do you hear? Nothing. I heard someone scream over there, but <laughs> you shouldn't hear anything at all. Owls are capable of almost perfectly silent flight. It's because the edge of their feathers are very soft. So when he flaps his wings, there are no loud flapping noises, or when feathers rub together, there are no rubbing or friction sounds. And this way, they're able to sneak up on a wide variety of prey, including incredibly large animals. Eagle owls are known to hunt for animals as large as fox, and believe it or not, in Europe, there's something known as a roe deer. Roe deer weighs about 40 pounds and stands about two feet tall. And that's rather impressive considering that this bird only weighs about four pounds. Now, remember, hollow bones and feathers look much larger than he actually weighs. So, all right. But what do you think of Romeo here? Has he done well? Yes. Yeah. All right, Romeo. Tell you what, it's time to head home. You want to fly to that perch? <laughs> this is an interactive program, by the way. All right, wait for it. One more jump. All right, back in the door, Romeo. Back. It sound like he says an ant anyone else. Back in the door. 30-minute presentation. Did we get the applause too soon, Romeo? One more jump. Wait for it. All the way in. All the way. One more. There we go. Now.